Welcome back to Just the Facts About Prediabetes. This is Session 1, Part 3. In the previous video, we discussed what is prediabetes and how it affects the blood glucose or the blood sugar levels. We also talked about the risk factors for type 2 diabetes and some of the lab values that your medical provider may be referencing in regards to prediabetes or type 2 diabetes. In this video, we'll review the DPP study. DPP stands for the Diabetes Prevention Program. And we'll be talking about how the results from this program may have an impact on your goals that you set for both physical activity and healthy eating. Let's get started. If you are at risk for diabetes or you have been diagnosed with prediabetes, there are steps you can take to prevent the development of type 2 diabetes. In 2002, the results of a large clinical trial were published in the New England Journal of Medicine. The researchers wanted to study the effects of medication versus lifestyle changes with people that were both overweight and had prediabetes. The study investigated over 3,200 participants across the United States. The results that we'll discuss were powerful, especially as the results were the same for all participants, regardless of gender, age, race, or social economic status. So in this study, there were three groups. The first group was the placebo group, and they received basically fake pills instead of medication. They were also given additional information about weight loss, increasing activity, and healthy eating. The second group took the oral medication metformin. Metformin is a drug to treat diabetes. Additionally, they were also given general information on healthy eating, activity, and weight loss. And then we have the third group. And this was what we call the lifestyle change group. They received no medication, but received intensive individual counseling on healthy eating, moving more, and other lifestyle changes. They were given specific goals to lose 5 to 10% of their body weight and to increase their activity to a minimum of 150 minutes a week of moderate activity. The weight loss goal of 5 to 10% was based on previous studies showing that that amount was achievable and sustainable within a six month period. Most study participants used brisk walking as their activity. The results were impressive. Three years later, the study found the following. The subjects or participants that took metformin, they reduced their risk of um, developing type 2 diabetes by 31% when compared to the placebo group. Then, the lifestyle change group reduced their risk of diabetes by 58% when compared to the placebo group. This is better than the medication group. Again, those are impressive results. Additionally, if the participants were 60 years or older, they reduced the risk of diabetes by 71% when compared to the placebo group. Remember, the findings were the same regardless of the participant's gender, age, race, or social economic group. I want to note out two important items. Most participants that reduced their risk of developing type 2 diabetes lost about 7% of their body weight. So it was not a large number, but it was moderate weight loss. For example, if somebody lost 200 pounds, this would be about 14 pounds. Secondly, that their average weekly physical activity was higher than recommended. It was about 224 minutes a week. That's about 45 minutes a day. In this study, Losing weight was the most effective method to prevent the development of type 2 diabetes. We realize that for some, these lifestyle changes are significant. It's a quick reminder that type 2 diabetes is a disease that can be managed, but at this point it cannot be cured, whereas prediabetes can be reversed. While that may be some somber the news, the good news is that for many people, making lifestyle changes may prevent or delay the onset of type 2 diabetes. 
So we're going to give you the three minute pitch on the next slide. What steps can you start with today to prevent or develop type 2 diabetes? Now that we have the facts, we're going to present a quick pitch about the things you can do today to increase your activity, eat healthier, and lose weight. We do have more detailed information regarding a healthy eating plan or how much activity we need, so if you're interested in more information, keep listening or go to the next video. So let's start with activity or movement. First, think about what movement you enjoy that also brings your heart rate up to a moderate pace. Focus on what fits in your schedule and what you like to do. Otherwise, it's hard to stay motivated day in and day out if exercise feels like it's a chore or another thing on your to-do list. Do you like to walk briskly? Do you like to ride a bike, indoors or outdoors? Do you enjoy dancing or swimming? If you have any medical complications or physical limitations, please check with your medical provider prior to starting any type of activity, exercise, or fitness class. Most importantly, add in at least 15 minutes of continuous activity today. So let's move over to healthy eating. Again, this is just a quick pitch. We have more information in the next few slides or the next video. One, Think about increasing your intake of non-starchy vegetables to at least half your plate at lunch and dinner. Think about, about eating out less often and maybe packing your lunch. It's an easy way to control your portion sizes. Lastly, rethink your drink. What are you drinking? If it includes sweet tea, regular soda, lemonade, fruit juice, or some of the flavored coffees, we recommend that you swap it out for some less sugary options. There's a great handout on the website where you found this video. And regarding fruit juice, sometimes we grew up thinking it was healthy. We do recommend that you eat your fruit versus drinking it. Also think about weight loss. What is a healthy weight loss? We normally recommend starting with a five to 10% goal. Because remember from the study, a modest weight loss had a significant impact on lowering the blood sugar. It's also important how fast you lose that weight. So if you weigh between 150 to 200 pounds, normally a healthy weight loss rate would be about a pound a week. If you weigh between 200 and 250 pounds, then losing one to two pounds per week is a healthy rate. If you're over 250 pounds, it could be two to three pounds a week. Sometimes, if we're not making healthy changes and we're losing weight too fast, there can be some medical complications. Do these small changes really work? We have many patients that ask us that. The answer is a definite yes. When we look at the research, it does show that losing five to seven percent of your current weight, increasing your activity, and eating a healthier lifestyle can cut your risk of developing type 2 diabetes in half. Again, thank you for watching, and when it works for you, please return and watch parts 4 and 5.